I am logged in to maps.google.com and I have further signed into my Jeff Coach email account. Were I not, I would see an option over here in the top right to sign in. So your first step for this week's project is to log into maps.google.com and sign into your account. I'm going to show you how to use Google Maps to create custom map tours that could be used for student projects or presentations. I have seen these used where students have created uh, lit trips with Google Maps, where if setting is a critical piece of a novel and the character is moving from location to location, they can note all of those locations with a map tour and add in some important information about each stop. I've also seen this used for many country projects where places of interest are noted or cities are highlighted with specific imports and exports. Pretty much any project where location is important would lend itself nicely to a Google Map Tour. Or you could simply make a Google Map, a collaborative Google Map Tour of all of the different places your class has visited that year or studied or even the houses of your students. So after you've gone to maps.google.com and signed in, you'll see the familiar Get Directions button, and next to it is the My Places button. This will pull up any of the Google Maps tours or custom Google Maps you've created. So I created a sample Google Map tour of the different houses I grew up in in Arvada, and if I click the title of that map, I'm taken to the three place marks that I've added to this map. I didn't zoom in like I would have in Google Earth, and to bring up information about each place mark, I can just select it, and I have just a very small picture for each item on here. And when I select the next placeholder, we move over to that area. Had I grown up in Pennsylvania in between these two houses, the screen would have just hopped from Arvada to Pennsylvania. We wouldn't have zoomed across the earth like we do in Google Earth. So this is what a map tour looks like. Let's go ahead and explore how we can make our own. So I'm going to go back to the My Places button and choose the red Create Map button to get started. Your map tours can be public, meaning others could search for those on the web and view the different place marks you've added. If that makes you uncomfortable, simply choose Unlisted as your option. I'm going to create a demo that we have used at Ralston Valley for a Google Map tour for French chateaus. So I'm going to title my project French chateaus. This was a PowerPoint project that we converted over to a Google Maps project because the teacher wanted the students to have a better idea of where the chateau was. In PowerPoint, they put in beautiful images but the students really didn't have an understanding of where the chateau was in France. Many would be surprised that typical suburban homes or pretty nice suburban homes would be located right next to the chateau or would be right in the middle of the city or some wouldn't be, they'd be in the country. She also wanted to capitalize on the ability to use street view with this project. So I have typed in a title. I'm not going to do a description, but I'm going to click done. I almost was able to click save, but Google's auto saving for me. So now that it says saved, I will just click done. And you can see I have created a map tour, but there's no place marks in here. So I'm going to go back and edit. That brings up my three tools across the top that I can use. The first is just to select and move the map around. The second is the one we use the most data place mark. And then I will also show you how to use the add line or shape tool. So the first thing that I need to do is to put in the name of my chateau. So I'm going to copy and paste this in from online source so I don't have to type that all in myself and I've landed in map view I can tell this chateau is pretty much in the countryside in France I can zoom in and out to see where it is in location to other areas and if I hover over on the right I can switch to map view which would show me streets and you can see Google Earth is also an option however when I switch over to Google Earth I get that great three-dimensional kind of panning view of Google Earth and there's a 3D model of the castle, but I lose my tools to make my own map tour. So if your students don't see those tools, just have to make sure they go back up to the toggle box on the right and toggle back to Maps from Google Earth. So now I'm in Google Maps and I don't want to be in the street view, I actually want to be in the satellite view. So Maps has two views, street view and satellite view. This is exactly what I want. Now, even though this location has its own place mark, that's great, but I can't really edit that one. So I'm going to use the place mark button to drag my own place mark right on top of this chateau so that I can add my own custom information. I will add the title of the chateau, and I want you just to add some brief text. And I will usually have my students switch over to the rich text editor, which allows them to bold, highlight, change colors, and have a little bit more functionality in their typing. I also want you to add in a picture. So I have some pictures here of this French chateau and I'm going to 
right click. Now I initially had this picture as a thumbnail. I'll, I'll try it again where I'm going to copy this image URL. I right click to copy from the thumbnail image on Google Images. And a lot of times because those links contain all the search information with it, it won't paste properly into my Google Map Tour. So I'll try it. I'm going to use the insert picture button and it says to paste in the, the URL of my image. So I'll paste that in and we'll see if it gives me the error about it being too long. I think it will because I don't even see anything. So yes, maximum character length exceeded. So it's going to delete the picture that I put in. So to eliminate that, if that happens to you or your students, all you need to do is just maximize the picture so it's actually on a web page, right click on it, copy the URL, go back to maps and repeat the process. This just shortens the URL by taking out that search information. Looks like that time we have success and you'll see Google kind of resize the image for me to better fit in my editing box. The preview here is much smaller that we'll see when we're actually presenting these or going through the map tour. So I'll show you the difference when we get there. This looks good, so I'll click the OK button and I can see that the location has been put kind of along the left here, which will become my map itinerary. So I'm ready to add in my second chateau. Notice that when I enter my search, we don't zoom over to another area of France. We just snap from one location to another. And now we're at another chateau. And I will repeat the process. You can zoom in a little bit. Take my place marker tool and put a place mark right on top of the chateau, right next to the official one. And I'll type in the name. And again, add some text. Now you'll notice that there is a linking tool right in here in my rich text editor. So I could add in a link to a website as supporting documentation. And because I can add in links, I could also add a verbal component to this. If I wanted to, this was a world language lesson. So I could have my students pop over to Vocaroo. I'm going to just click record, allow the mic. I'm going to just record a quick narration in French. We'll pretend about this little chateau and click stop. Once I'm done, click here to save this recording, I get a link for this recording. So I'm just going to copy this link. This is a tool called Vocaroo. There are several similar ones. This is one I have really good luck with. And then I can go back to my Maps Tour and I can say, listen to my audio message. And I can hyperlink this right here. And now when I'm presenting, I can click my link. It'll open in a new tab and I can play some pre-recorded information about my chateau. I want to show you a second way at this moment to put in a picture beyond simply getting a link and copying it. So I have a picture of Chateau de Chambord. And go back here. Here's some images. Again, I need to enlarge it. If I try and drag it in from right here, I'm going to get that same message about it being too large. So this is the second option. This works in just about any Google tool, but you'll click on the image with your, the left click of your mouse and don't let go. And as long as you're holding down the left button and not letting go, you're allowed to drag this image around. So I'm going to drag it up to the tab where my maps tour is being built, drag it over to the editing box and just drop it right in. So that's a very fast way, this drag and drop method. I'm going to click OK and see if it took it. Looks like it did. I'll just go back into my itinerary over here and I can see that the picture is still in there. It'll look better again when I preview this. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to save my tour to show you what the preview mode looks like. So it says it's already saved. I'll click Done. And this is where I have my, my different place markers. And as I click each place mark, I'm taken to the area that I'm at. I get the picture that I've added, and if I'm presenting, I can take the little Google Maps street view guy and put him nearby on a street. See how close I got there. I probably should have zoomed in a lot more. I didn't quite make it, so I would do a better job of zooming in until I find, there we go, there's my chateau. So now I'll take the little street view guy and we'll put him at this intersection and see if we can get a good view of the chateau. Very nice. You can see many people across the world upload their pictures, and so you can preview some pictures that others have taken from that exact location that you're at. When you're ready to resume your presentation, you simply click the next place marker, 
And now I'm in street view for this chateau. I can zoom out. Again, the zooming features are not as robust in Google Maps as they are in Google Earth. So it's going to take me to the same view that I was in, so I can zoom back out to show where the chateau is in relation to the French countryside. And I can go back to street view if I'd like to during my presentation. Which offers a really nice view of the surrounding area when I'm presenting this information to others, including some of the tourists in the area. So once you have finished your Google Maps tour, you're ready to put it on your website. Now, if there's anything you need to change, you can always click the edit button, select the place mark you want to edit, and use the editing tools to make any changes you like. Oh, and before we move on, I want to show you how to use that additional tool. I'm going to click edit and show you how to use this drawing tool that you can also use when creating a map tour. So we've used this to know items that have significant length. Um, I'm thinking earth science. We use the line tool to draw a fault along fault lines along a map. So I'm going to click where I want my line to start. And every time I click, I kind of can change direction. So you can also use this tool to note paths, locations from one area to the next. You'll see it's calculating my distance as I go. When I'm done, I just kind of double click on the end route and then I can name this. So if this is where the San Andreas Fault, I could type that in here and put in some information and supporting documentation. I don't really want this fault on my Google Map Tour. You can see it added it right over here as line one because I didn't name it. So I can select this and I think I'll just delete it and save my map tour. Tried to save my map tour again, Google beat me to it. So I'll select done. And now you need to decide how you want to add this to your Google Sites website. So I'm going to collect the universal icon for linking, this chain link, and I can copy in just a URL or I can embed it on my website. I'm going to show you what it looks like embedded. So I'm going to just click in this box that says page HTML to embed in a website. I'm going to highlight that and click copy. Then I'm going to switch over to my more Google website and go to the maps tab. And then I'll use the pencil to edit. Because I'm working with HTML code, I can't just paste it right here on the page. I need to go up to the HTML button on my toolbar. I just go down to the end of the code and paste in my copied code. Click Update and Save. So you can see I have a nice view of the first placeholder on my map tour, but I don't have the ability to navigate from one placeholder to the next because that was along the left here, which is not included in this view. So this is a really nice view to embed if you just have one place. It still looks really nice on my website instead of just an ugly pasted hyperlink. And I also have this link that Google added right beneath it where I can view it in its typical map view. So I do like to embed it and then I can click on it and go right here to the view where I can navigate among my different place markers. If you didn't like that view, you can just use the chain link icon, copy the address that Google provides, back to your website and paste it in or alternately hyperlink it. The difference is with a hyperlink you type in a word that people can easily recognize use the chain link button on the toolbar to add in a link choose web address paste in that web address I like mine to open in a new window and click OK. Now I'll click Save and so now I have my chateau linked on my website in a variety of ways here it's embedded here it's hyperlinked and here I've just pasted the ugly old direct address to get there. So that's how you create a custom Google Maps tour. Make sure that for your tours you have at least four locations, each with some brief text about the location and a picture included. If you have any questions, let me know.